today <laughs> together with Professor Takemoto and Keiko Hara. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Takemoto. Um, most of the people on campus call me uh, Ron, uh, my colleagues. All my students call me Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, uh, we're here today uh, to talk about uh, a new center, uh, a Mokuhanga Center, which is now uh, situated in my office. <laughs> at Pittman College, uh, and um, uh, I want to begin, of course, by um, thanking everyone who made this uh, weekend possible. Uh, here is Morino S. who is uh, 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 who, who was uh, a guest at Whitman College. Uh, Tula is somewhere, and she was a. Uh, uh, I met Tula when, uh, when she was working in uh, Kyoto, uh, and um, so let me just say one word before I begin the whole thing. I, I don't have prepared remarks, but let me just say that um, I come to you today uh, because um, Keiko is uh, the energy uh, and the dynamic uh, force uh, behind everything, and uh, she's the dog and I'm the tail. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, in fact, I've been um, uh, I've been the tail for two kegels, uh, and uh, there's uh, uh, Keiko in in, uh, in Tokyo, of course, who really um, uh, helped us and encouraged us uh, to do something uh, in Wawa, Wall. and so uh, that's how it basically began, and. Um, so the Mokuhanga Center was developed because she's, uh, Keiko in Tokyo said, hey, if you develop a center, we can get funds for you. And so that's how it happened. Uh, that was the first. Uh, and so we were able to bring uh, some young uh, Mokuhanga artists from Tokyo. And we had our, uh, uh, an exhibit uh, for those uh, young artists. Uh, but it all began in 2014. So maybe we can, yes. uh, um, it began in 2014 because Keiko uh, said, let's do an exhibit of abstract Mokuhanga, American abstract Mokuhanga. And that was our uh, initial start. Uh, by the way, my, my field is not in Mokuhanga. Uh, I can't say the kinds of things that Karen, who came to Whitman and helped us uh, at the, uh, our, our first exhibit, uh, but my field is in Japanese literature. Uh, and um, uh, so what I'm really interested in is eccentric monks and hermits in the Muromachi period. Uh, and, um, and then my other uh, field is tea. Uh, I've been studying tea uh, since 1975. Uh, there's a tea room at Whitman College, um, and, uh, and my other interest is calligraphy. Um, we have some things over here, uh, so if you have a chance, take a look. Uh, one that uh, I'd like to, and we're really advertising uh, the 2018 um, uh, next workshop that we're having at Whitman College. And, <coughs> Tula is going to join us, and so we're really happy about that. So uh, there's some information there about some of the things that we've been doing uh, since uh, I, I arrived on the Whitman campus in 1983. Uh, Keiko arrived in 1985, and we've been working together since then uh, with a number of different kinds of projects, uh, art exhibits. Uh, she does the art, I do the talking. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, my, my interest is in uh, Buddhism. Um, I, I've done some translations of Buddhist texts. Um, my interest is in uh, uh, Ikben Shonin, uh, Shindan Shonin uh, from the Muromachi period. Uh, but um, so um, we're just really happy to be here today to introduce you to some of the things that we've been doing in Walla Walla. Uh, and uh, for those of you that I've seen before, uh, who have come to our workshops and to uh, our uh, guests that we've had. Um, I'm uh, glad to be here. For those of you who I have, who I have not met, Hajime uh, Mwase, those of you who are going to Aloha. Well, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, introduce you. Uh, I'm Aloha. Uh, 
Satasan to hear uh, uh, Keiko Kabuta-san told me, uh, no, I think the, uh, she does fun things. And Satasan is really kind of a cop. <laughs> He's a supporter and he really kind of makes things happen. Mm -hmm. Same things. I am having fun. <laughs> and uh, Professor Takemoto makes things happen. <laughs> Um, so, some of the things that we've been uh, doing for uh, since 1988 uh, is um, projects and, and, and exhibits that we've had on the Whitman College campus. We're from Walla Walla, Washington, okay, and uh, it's a small liberal arts college um, now known and famous for penitentiaries and wine, <laughs> and so. Uh, uh, here is, of course, uh, um, uh, some of the work that we were able to collect uh, and uh, bring to uh, the campus uh, in, um, uh, in the Sheehan Gallery. Uh, and uh, we got some really good press, not so much in Walla Walla, but in Tokyo. And so uh, Keiko in Tokyo was really excited about some of the things that we were trying to do, and she encouraged us uh, not to think of building bridges, but because uh, we're not really interested in building bridges. I think what we're interested in is we know that the bridges exist. How can we take advantage of that? How can we make those connections even more visible, not only to uh, my students, or the people in the city of Walla Walla, but uh, 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 in a much, much more broader uh, sense. And so well, I'm interested in seeing bridges, my, uh, uh, developing those bridges, and then more importantly, uh, to help people walk those connections. Uh, if you know anything about Keiko's work, you know, when she talks about topophilia, she's talking not just about spaces, but about all the things within that space that connect, uh, the fibers that connect us all. Uh, Karen just talked about the way of seeing things. And I think that's, there's, there's Hiroki's work right there. Um, and um, uh, so uh, we were, uh, we're always interested in how it is that we see, but then how is it that we can walk the path? Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, what we've been doing is trying to invite people uh, to help us see, to invite people to let us see what they're doing, and then how it connects, at least in, particularly for me, in terms of my, uh, my work, whether it's a tea, flower, and calligraphy. Uh, and so, um, uh, at every show that we have, we try to connect all the different traditional uh, uh, art forms uh, and uh, since we built a, a, a tea room in 2010, um, for the last, it's, it's seven years old now, um, uh, that gives me an opportunity to use the tea room, and I have a picture of the tea room over here, uh, to use the tea room as the space uh, in which uh, Mokuhanga and works of Mokuhanga uh, are displayed. And so it gives me an opportunity to not just talk about uh, a traditional Japanese aesthetics, but to see how those traditional works are now exfoliating and moving uh, in interesting ways. And so, uh, and we're using the Mokuhanga uh, world and uh, those ideas uh, to, and here's Tess Gallagher uh, with uh, her work and this is something that Tess Gallagher and, and Keiko worked together on. Um, we've, we've had, uh, so we're trying to bring people uh, to Walla Walla. And we're trying to have them uh, become part of the Walla Walla Whitman uh, College, Wokuhanga world. And uh, so this particular uh, 2014 <coughs> exhibit is what propelled us into thinking about uh, Mokuhanga as a way for uh, people in the city and people uh, beyond the city of Walla Walla to, uh, there, there he is. Okay. <laughs> and so um, uh, 
he not only came to uh, Walla Walla, but uh, uh, he gave a, a, a demonstration and a workshop. And behind him, by the way, is a uh, uh, a biobu, um, and that biobu is what he wanted to, you know, um, uh, place himself in front of that biobu, and he did, and he looked really good, like an emperor. <laughs> 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 Uh, and he, what he did was he brought an energy to our community to talk about the ways in which we can use the Mokuhanga technique. To talk about Walla Walla, which by the way means many rivers, many small rivers. It's an Indian word that means many small rivers. And what we're trying to do is connect the idea of water and Mokuhanga. That is, that you know, what we're doing is we're not dealing with, we're dealing with water and pigment. Uh, and so, uh, and that has resonated not only among uh, uh, the uh, people in Walla Walla, but the people who have begun to become interested uh, in uh, uh, ways in which we can use uh, uh, materials that will not harm the environment. And Walla Walla is very concerned about salmon, about salmon safe, about water, about how we uh, are connected with uh, the uh, environment around us. We're, we're very happy about wine because many of the winemakers are really interested, not only is it good, but it, they're very interested in uh, the way in which uh, they, instead of uh, um, uh, wheat farmers, uh, they make a lot of money, but they also, um, uh, there's a lot of chemicals that are placed into the ground. And so we're interested in the ways, in, in all of those ways, that help us. There's, of course, here's Karen, who also came uh, to help us during the abstract Mokohanga. Uh, and so we're trying to invite uh, different artists uh, who will help us bring that vocabulary uh, to uh, the Whitman campus and to our students. And so this was uh, the 2014 uh, uh, Mokuhanga, uh, uh, there she is. Uh, and uh, uh, we were very pleased with uh, Karen who came to open the uh, 2014 Mokuhanga exhibit, and then Hiroki who came to close the 2014 Mokuhanga uh, exhibit that we had. And so, um, and then our first, uh, attempt right after uh, 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 Keiko and um, Kadota uh, helped us uh, bring young Mokohanga artists to, uh, to Walla Walla. It's at that point where uh, uh, Keiko Hara uh, did, uh, established a residency program uh, uh, in Walla Walla and she is the director of a new residency program for um, uh, Mokohanga artists. Uh, but we also decided right after that to sponsor our first, this was our initial summer Mokuhanga workshop. And we were able uh, to convince uh, Shibata Sensei from New York at Pace to join us. And it was wonderful. Uh, and so this was our first, we had 15 uh, participants uh, and uh, uh, many who had never worked with Mokuhanga before. Uh, and so uh, uh, they learned the technique, and now, right now, uh, for the last uh, six months, uh, I have an exhibit of their work in the, what is known as our Breezeway Gallery um, uh, in, at Whit Whitman College. And so uh, what they produced in the summer of 2016 is now uh, part of a, a semi-permanent uh, uh, exhibit of uh, uh, Mokuhanga and uh, Mary was there, um, uh, and uh, uh, Takamori Sensei from uh, from uh, uh, University of Washington, who retired and he was uh, uh, worked in the uh, ceramics department there. Uh, he joined us with his wife Vicky. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're really sad that uh, Takamori Sensei uh, passed away in January, and so uh, but. Uh, he came uh, and provided a, a really vibrant, interesting energy. Uh, he was very sick at the time, but uh, 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 his work um, was a wonderful uh, uh, um, woodblock print that, that is now uh, uh, 
uh, part of our collection. So we've started a uh, Mokuhanga uh, collection of work done both not only by uh, artists like Hiroki uh, and of course Keiko, uh, but uh, by uh, people who are, have participated in our workshop. So the workshop, this was the 2016 workshop, uh, and in the background here uh, is a flower arrangement uh, by uh, a good friend of mine from the city of Kyoto, Yabe uh, Keishu, and she came to do a, a, a Sogetsu uh, flower demonstration, which was part of uh, the, um, uh, the workshop that we had. So what we're trying to do is connect flower, the uh, flower uh, demonstration, uh, flower uh, arrangement with uh, my interest in tea, uh, with my interest in calligraphy, uh, uh, we have uh, um, my sensei, uh, calligraphy sensei, is uh, in the city of uh, uh, Seattle. Uh, uh, Fuji Yoshia sensei, there he is right here. Uh, and so Fuji sensei came and joined us as well to give a demonstration of uh, how brushes work on paper. And so, uh, and his brush is amazing. Uh, and um, uh, he constantly says, uh, stop doing tea and pick up the brush. And so, you know, uh, and I've been trying to, but uh, uh, I've been doing tea for so long that that's basically what I do. But I'm interested in tools. I'm interested in the way in which people handle tools, pick up tools, and actually, uh, and uh, this year we had Shitamura Sensei, uh, who is here at this conference. Uh, we had our second um, uh, a workshop on this, by the way, is uh, at the Foundry, uh, the Walla Walla Foundry uh, Gallery, uh, and Mark Anderson, who is the uh, uh, a Whitman uh, College graduate, is also um, created a, an exhibit space. And so we had an exhibit at the Foundry of um, Shibata Sensei's work. Uh, we're planning to have an exhibit next year. Uh, this year we had an exhibit of Keiko's most recent work, and uh, it was a wonderful exhibit. Uh, and then next year we're planning to have an exhibit of Tula's work uh, here at this. Uh, she doesn't, you may not be new this, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in this wonderful space. Uh, and uh, here's another work by Yabe Keishu um, uh, using a, a um, a, a vase that was made by a good friend of mine who is a potter, uh, who does tea uh, uh, pottery, uh, and then of course uh, Shibata Sensei's work. So we have Shibata and uh, 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 Toyota Mokugen and the Yabe Keishu all together in one corner. Uh, this year in the summer of 2017, we did a print studio program. And so what we're planning right now is to do a Mokuhanga workshop uh, every other year, uh, print studio program uh, afterwards, which is a, the print studio program is for people who have had experience in the Mokuhanga program. And so this year we had 10 people who came. Uh, we opened it up, uh, and in two days it filled up, and we uh, had Kitamura Sensei uh, join us uh, for a uh, five and a half days of work. Uh, and uh, it, was a, uh, it was a lot of fun for me uh, to, to uh, watch Kitamura Sensei work. Uh, for, but I must say that I was more interested in uh, what uh, Kitamura Sensei and I did every night, which was to talk about tools, to talk <laughs> about uh, and to drink, and uh, uh, to talk about the way in which he handles tools which is very similar to the way in which I would handle a tea bowl. Uh, uh, he would talk about uh, carving, but also about sharpening tools. Uh, it's not so much about uh, how you carve, it's about how you sharpen the tools. And he told one amazing story for me, uh, because I'm always interested in how to pick up a tea bowl or how to hold my hands, or how to walk. Um, and so most of my life has been learning how to, how, how just simply to walk. 
And uh, Kitamura Sensei told the story, he said, when he was first learning, his sensei would come to the workshop and uh, his sensei would look at um, what he was doing and he would not look at any of the things that he was carving. And, um, and there's Daniel. Uh, um, and um, so um, Ninju Fuke is right there. Uh, Until the very end, no regrets. If you practice and you work and you understand what it means to walk, uh, then till the very end, you will not have any regrets. Um, uh, the, um, uh, so Kitamura Sensei uh, said that um, uh, when his sensei came, he would not look at what he carved. The sensei would not look at all at what he carved. And then three months later, he would come again, and he would not look at all at what he carved. And Shitamura was going, why isn't he look, looking at what I carved? Uh, and uh, 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 he said that after about a year, um, he came and actually looked at the wood block that he carved. Until then, he was only interested in how well he sharpened his tools. And so he, he would walk in, and he would look at Sensei's tools, and, and then he'd walk out. And then he'd come back and look at Sensei's tools, and then he'd walk out. And a year later, he says, now I'm ready to look at what you've carved because your tools look good. And so uh, some wonderful conversations over beer and wine uh, about his work. And you'll see, um, uh, how did I get into that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, Professor Takemoto uh, has amazing uh, support. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. One of the nice things that we have is we have this uh, house here, which is um, where uh, our students live who are studying language, Japanese language. So it's called the Tekusujuku. And so we had uh, um, uh, some dinners, which allowed uh, people who were part of the workshop to come together and uh, talk after uh, a day of work. And then, um, so here is um, our 2018 uh, plan for uh, our local Honda workshop. Uh, this will be June 10 to June 16, and I'm here basically to advertise for our program. Um, and uh, Tula will join us, uh, and um, as I said, uh, in, uh, when Keiko and I took students uh, Whitman students to Japan to study paper making and um, uh, uh, and woodblock prints and uh, uh, books making. One of the people that we uh, um, uh, visited was Tula, who had uh, a studio and lived in the uh, uh, eastern hills of the city of Kyoto. And so that was when I first met her uh, when I went to her studio. I had a couple students who worked with Tula, and then, um, uh, so we're, we're very, very happy that she'll be joining us for the 2018 Mokohanga workshop. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen in 2019, whether we'll have a print program, but uh, that's one of the things that we're thinking about. Uh, but uh, what happened uh, because of the things that we've been doing is that uh, the Bend Art Center in Oregon has uh, become really interested in what we're doing. Pat Clark, who is at the Bend Art Center, said, we want to get involved. And so we contacted Tula and asked her if she would be willing to give a Mokuhanga workshop at Whitman College and a bookmaking workshop in Bend, Oregon. And so in two weeks, uh, the first week is the 10th of June to the 16th of June, I believe. And then from the 17th, uh, we're going to ask Tula to go to um, uh, Ben, and she'll be giving a workshop on uh, bookmaking. So uh, in two weeks, uh, in the Pacific Northwest, 
uh, we will be regaled by uh, uh, Tula. And uh, by the way, during that, those two weeks, uh, or at least, uh, we'll be doing tea, we'll be doing flour, uh, and we'll probably be doing calligraphy as well. So if you have, uh, have some interest, uh, we, I have some flyers over here. Um, we, on, by November 15, we'll have information. Uh, registration begins uh, on December 15. And um, uh, if, if our last one was, it, uh, I think it'll fill up fairly quickly. So we welcome you. Come join us in the city of Walla Walla, uh, the, the land and the city of many waters. And uh, join us for another Wampanoag workshop. Thank you. Thank you.